All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can complete our app here by adding in the UI image constraint animations in this video. Okay, now right now, you should have this application here on the screen. If you don't, go ahead and continue going through the previous videos to get to this point. All right, now to get to this point or to get to the point we want with the UI image view animations like you see here in the completed app, what we need to do is we need to create some constraints that we can modify and then animate. So what I need you to do is go into your custom cell, go into card cell .swift, And what we'll do is we'll just declare the height animation as a constraint that we can modify later on. So right now for feature image, we don't have a height constraint or we do have a height constraint, but it's at the bottom and it, um, it is where it is, right? Like we can't do anything at, after this point. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to go in here and we'll just do it above our setup constraints and we'll say file private function, sorry, not function, but variable. And this is going to be our image height one. Okay. Image height, let's say closed. And we're going to say this is of type NS layout constraint. And we're gonna use a bang to force unwrap it, basically saying, yes, this will exist. We know we're gonna use this image height closed only at a time that we've actually assigned it something, okay? Because if you were to try to do something with this right now, it would crash because there's nothing set, okay? But we know for sure we're gonna have it set by the time we use it, so we're not worried about using an optional and then having to unwrap it with more code. So what we need to do is we need to set this to something. Let's go down here and say image height closed is equal to, and then we'll just paste this entire line in here, except for what I want you to do is not activate it, and then let's set it to 20. And then the next thing we need to do is have the open height, which is very clearly the 140. So let's copy this and paste it, and instead of saying closed, let's say opened. And then we'll copy this, or we'll just set it here, we'll say image height opened is equal to feature image dot height anchor dot constraint dot equal to constant 140. And then we don't want to activate it. Okay. Now here's the deal. We want one of them to be activated by default, right? Because if we don't, then there's no height anchor on it. So what we need to do is we need to activate the closed one by default, because when it's, when we initially come into the cell, it needs to be closed. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's write a function in which we can do this, okay? Because we're going to call the function when we initially kind of initialize our cell. So what we need to do is say file private function animate. And then this is basically going to, by default, we're going to say self dot and we'll say image height closed. And we're going to say is active is equal to false, okay? Well, we'll say is active is equal to true. And then the one that's gonna be closed by default, that's not gonna be active, is gonna be our 140, right? Our higher constraint. So let's go ahead, go ahead and say is active is equal to false. And then now what this is gonna do is basically activate our closed height. Okay, we wanna say open here, sorry. It's gonna activate our closed height by default. So if we recompile our application, nothing's gonna happen because we haven't really called this. So we need to call this somewhere. Now you might think, okay, I'm gonna call it inside of setup constraints, or I might call it inside of the super init, right? Or the initializer. We don't wanna do that, however, okay? And notice here how once it boots up, we're not gonna have our image in here because the height anchor is gone, or at least it's messed up, right? It's not the way it should be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna go down sorry, into table view controller.swift. And we're going to go down here into our cell for row at, okay? And what we need to do is we need to call our animate function. So we need to say something like cell.animate. So let's go into that method and let's say right here, after we set the data, let's say cell.animate. And that's basically just going to activate our constraints, okay? Let's see. So it looks like we have a problem. And it's basically because we've declared it as a file private function. Um, that's weird though. Okay. Yeah, that's why. So let's go into card cell. We've declared it as a file private. Now the reason it's not working is because it's private to the file. Let's just rename it to private and reload our application. And it still should work if it doesn't. Okay. We'll just call it funk. 
Okay, yeah, I always forget. So for file private functions, they don't have, like, they're not real private functions, right? Like you would in normal object-oriented programming, if you know what that is. Um, essentially, it can only be called by that class if it's private, okay? Now, if it's file private, it can be called by other classes from without, from other classes, but they just have to be in the same file, okay? So there we are there, and we have that kind of initial, like, tiny height, right? Now, if I go back into the completed app, that's not it. In the completed app, if I close it and open it, you'll see it's that 20 height initially. We want it to bounce down like that. Okay, so this is NS layout constraint, programmatic auto layout animations. So programmatic auto layout animations. All right, so what we need to do is we need to actually animate it as well. We need to animate open immediately, right? So let's say dispatch queue dot main Let's read the descriptions of each of these. Dispatch queue. Dispatch queue manages the execution of work items. Each work item submitted to a queue is processed on a pool of threads managed by the system. That sounds super cool, but it probably doesn't make any sense to have of you. So don't worry about it for now, but we're gonna say dispatch queue dot main dot async after, and it says submit a work item to dispatch to a dispatch queue for asynchronous execution after a specified time. So in this case, we're really just using it as a timer and we probably don't even need to use this with the delay we have on UI animate. So let's go ahead and say dispatch time dot now plus one, and then let's hit return on execute and just print, okay, let's animate this open. And then let's recompile our application and you're gonna see it doesn't print this for an entire second, okay? So that's where we can kind of get that delay into our application like you see in the completed app. Okay, so this is our app and it prints them all after a second. But in the completed app, you'll notice after it's like a split second. It's literally one tenth of a second. It doesn't animate open. Okay. And it just kind of looks better. Like if you were to take that one tenth out, you, you wouldn't think that it's there, but you would notice a difference like almost subconsciously. It's just a design thing. Okay. Let me know if you want a design course, by the way, and I'll make one. All right. So even a sketch course. Anyway, what we need to do is now activate, basically reverse the constraints. So we need to say, okay, well, I want the opened one to be true and I want the closed one to be false. Now it's important that you switch the rev order of these because you can't really activate a new height if you already have one activated. So we just need to deactivate the 20 height before we activate the 140. So we need to put that first. Okay, we need to deactivate the closed one first and then activate the open one. You can't have two at the same time or you're gonna get a warning in the console. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to call this method called self.contentView.layout if needed. So it's gonna say lays out the sub views immediately if layout updates are pending. By the time, like once we've added these, there are now layout updates that are pending once we've changed these because we've changed the value after they've been set. It initially doesn't need to be set because that's the first time we're setting those. But since we're resetting them, we need to basically recall it or it's not gonna work. Okay, so I'm trying to find my simulator here. Okay, so let's hit close. Let's hit open. And you'll see after a second, it just kind of it just kind of switches, okay? So what we need to do is we need to switch this to 0.1, so it's that one tenth of a second. And then you'll see kind of how that compares to our completed app. I'll, I'll switch between the two once it's done compiling. All right, so I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna hit open. Close, open. It's so quick because um, I actually want to, I think when I put in here was a delay on the UI view animation as well of like 0.15. So it's actually like 0.25. And then it has that spring animation. So it's going to take a second to kind of get going in the first place, which is also going to affect it. So really the combination of the dispatch queue and timer and the, uh, and the entire kind of animation is going to give it the effect, right? Okay, there you go. You can kind of see how that works now. All right, so if I switch to the completed app, you'll see it looks exactly the same except for it without the animations, right? Is our app has without the animations. But you'll see it flips down at like the same time, right? Okay, so to get that in there, we just need to call this method called uiview.animate. So let's cut the layout if needed, or let's leave it there and I'll show you what happens if we don't do it in there. So uiview.animate, and then we're just gonna choose the one with spring. So just type in spring 
So UI view animate spring, and then this is gonna appear. And it's gonna say, performs a view animation using a timing curve corresponding to the motion of a physical spring. So it literally gives us kind of a spring effect kind of look, right? Hit return on that bad boy. And let's go ahead and say we're for duration about a third of a second or a little under a third of a second. And then for the delay, we'll say 1.5, 0.15. And then that's when we'll go up here and switch this dispatch queue back to one. We don't even need the dispatch queue. We could really just put the delay right here and we'll switch that out and see if there's any difference. But I wanted to kind of just throw you another concept in this video just for the kicks, right? All right, so spring damping. Now you can kind of mess with this and get the effect you want. I think 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on both of these provides a nice little spring effect. You can change it and have it look completely different. Like these values will really change the way it looks and we'll modify them a bit, okay? And then let's say for options, we want curve ease in. You can also mess with that and it'll change it. And then for animations, we're gonna have to call self.contentview.layout needed in here. Hit tab and put nil for the completion. Now I want you to recompile your application and I want you to try and open it with layout if needed outside of the UI view animate. Now, NS layout constraints are kind of something hard to understand and fully comprehend at first, which is why I'm kind of giving you this approach. Go ahead and hit close and open and you'll see it doesn't even animate, it just kind of opens, right? So what we need to do is put layout if needed. So whenever you're doing UI view or NS layout, programmatic auto layout animations, just remember that you, all you have to do is switch the constraints in the right order so you need to deactivate the constraint and then activate the constraint. And then you need to use UIView.animate and you need to call layout if needed on the parent view specifically when doing it. You don't wanna say self.feature image. You don't wanna do it on the image. You wanna do it on the parent view because that's the one that's containing our image views, which is containing all of our constraints as a whole, okay? So just remember that. And if you forget, if you ever have any questions on UIViewAnimate or NS layout, auto layout animations, just come back to my course or my channel and I have content on this. Even come back to this video. I have more videos on NS layout animations, but I have it and I will show you guys how to do it in multiple scenarios. Okay, so close, open, and you'll see it animates open really nicely. All right, so now what I want you to do is change the delay to 2.5 and let's get rid of the dispatch queue because we don't even need it. Oops. There we go. And then let's get rid of the print and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hmm, that's the thing is if we're doing that, then why do we need this? But then we need this because we never set it up there. So we could put this in our constructor really. Okay, that looks different. All right, so that's actually an excellent reason to use it, okay? So what we should do, I wanna try this. I wanna say, I'm gonna hit Command Z a lot, and then I'm even gonna basically put the layout if needed. I'm gonna put that inside of the completion and see if that does anything, okay? I'm gonna see if it still animates it. I don't think it will, but let's give it a shot. And I'm gonna close, get rid of that and compile it. And this is me just kind of improvising, just kind of curious, genuinely just wanting to see how these things work. Yeah, so that was very obvious. Like clearly it's not gonna animate if it's not in the animation, but um, I was curious indeed anyway. I'm gonna hit reload on that and try that again. I don't think it's gonna do anything. All right, yeah, expected. But yeah, let's just go ahead and let's put everything back in there. So, oops, I didn't wanna do that. What we wanna do is have the, oh, okay, it's cause I command Z to that point too. We're gonna to say self.contentView.layout if needed. Okay, and there we go. So let's get rid of, so I guess that delay is necessary. I was, I was trying to remember why I did that. And then I remembered just barely after seeing it, oh, it's because of the constraints here, right? So we should be good there. Let's just go ahead and compile it one more time and see what it looks like. Okay, perfect. So we open it and it animates down. Okay, now if again, you can switch up the initial spring velocity to like 0.9 or the spring dampening to 0.2, which will make it a little bit more kind of expressed. 
more bouncy and it's just going to mess around with it a lot and it'll look completely different based on the values you put in there like you can make it look like a completely different thing that you wouldn't even think use the same animation function but you can see it kind of gets different obviously that's quite a bit but you can see what i'm going at right <laughs> i don't know why i asked you guys if it was a question i mean you can leave a comment or a q a question in the course if you want but yeah that's it and that is how you animate those and that's how you build out a table view app with drop down kind of sections right and it looks really good so that's it for this video and series slash section and uh, i'll see you all later see you in just a minute